Hi, I'm Lisa Eddy, your host of the Sacred Beauty Lifestyle Podcast. I'm so glad that you've made your way here and that I'm now sharing these podcasts here on YouTube. In my 25 years in the beauty industry, I have worked with thousands of women. I have witnessed so many beautiful, powerful, smart, and kind women who are hiding instead of shining. My mission is to empower you to own your true power and beauty inside and out to be truly confident and shine through your skin. Lord knows the world needs your light. I'm committed to helping you understand the choices that you are making that are working for or against you. I'll also be sharing beauty tips and tools your mother never taught you. And together we will bust urban beauty myths. Make sure to subscribe today to receive episodes right when they are released. For those who prefer listening to the audio podcast, head over to sacredbeautylifestyle.com. That's sacredbeautylifestyle.com. And you can find the platform of your choice. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Sacred Beauty Lifestyle Podcast. I am so excited to be here with Joseph Atalig, a self-proclaimed messy human who is sharing his journey to self-love and self-acceptance. After suffering a series of health setbacks, Joseph was forced to leave his 30 plus years in corporate America to a life of ease, simplicity, and health. Joseph is the founder of Love Theory, whose mission is to inspire humans to love more. What a beautiful mission. I am so honored and excited to be here with you today. Jojo, welcome. (laughs) Yes, yeah, I'm honored and just real tickled that we're going to have some time to talk about one of the things that, of course, I love to talk about, which is the power of love. So thank you for your invitation. The power of love. Yes. Thank you for saying yes. Now I'm singing uh, the Huey Lewis and the News song, though I will not sing for you today. If you can hear this in my voice, I'm super congested. I have been on a spiritual cleanse, purging stored emotions and memories after attending Dr. Joe Dispenza's retreat recently. Just FYI, y'all listening. (laughs) Uh, So I wanted to clear that because I don't usually have such a nasally sound. And I have to tell you, I um, often lovingly refer to Joseph as Jojo, and he calls me (laughs) Lily. And Jojo, I don't know if I told you this, but after attending Dr. Joe Dispenza's retreat, he now got your name Papa Joe. Like, I can't even call you that anymore because he is like everyone's Papa. So that's Papa Joe, y'all. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, I'm so excited to be here with you. I know you are a love leader and I'm sure not only me, but our listeners would love to hear about your your journey and where you are today. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Um, you know, and the timing actually as is just beautifully synchronized to where I am in this moment, actually. And as you reached out, you know, Lisa and said, Hey, I'd love to have you on the podcast and Said, what are we talking about? You said self-love. And I thought, wow, that has definitely been a part of the trajectory of my path and where, like I mentioned, where I am today. I, I think the easiest thing to do is to share really um, the last maybe four to five years where I went through, you know, the dark night of the soul lasted um, a, more than a night. <laughs> it was definitely a season. And it really took me to my knees. I mean, figuratively and literally, you know, to the point of surrender, letting go, trusting and allowing the source that beats my heart to take front and center. And little did I realize that I was holding on like so hard, you know, to all the things that I have built over time, you know, these false selves and these masks that I wore. Um, So that I could protect myself from actually myself, which I was hiding from. And so today in what's it's the end of September 2022, my life looks 180 degrees than it was um, a year ago, actually, almost to the day. So it's very appropriate, you know, to be here where I can proclaim that I, I mean, saying that I love myself. 
seems real trivial to the real feeling and understanding of really what that means. And for me, it means freedom, you know, and you go, you know, and, and I think that's, yeah, I mean, feeling that after I felt like I was in a cage, like, you know, and I could, the, the door was open, but I didn't want to leave, you know, type of thing is the most liberating and gratifying feeling. It's really tough to, you know, to really pinpoint, you know, so I'm not sure where you want me to start. <laughs> oh, well, it's interesting. I, there's a few things coming to mind right now when you're saying, you, you know, you, you, you caged yourself. I mean, isn't that the way? that we don't realize that we have the key to the door to freedom. And I love that you speak about freedom being, you know, really loving yourself. I mean, you shared that you had had some health issues and that forced you to leave corporate America. I think there's a lot and, and whatever you want to share, but I think there are things in there that maybe if you want to sum up anything or, you know, your journey with creating this company, I know it had started as, love wave and then is now called love theory i also think it's very interesting and not a coincidence that you chose a company where you are representing love so then you got called to step up to the highest level like any parts of you is what i heard that were not in alignment that were not really loving got lit up is that true do you want to speak to that joe <laughs> No, no, absolutely. You know, um, it was around the 2014-15 time frame where things just started to unravel. And it started where dis-ease was really showing up, like, prevalent in my body. I mean, it kind of, all at once, Lisa, um, you know, it ended up, I had eight eye surgeries um, in my left eye, which resulted in blindness because um, my optic nerve was damaged on the eighth surgery and then shortly after I, w I learned I was in kidney failure so um, I had to go on dialysis and happened to do that for three and a half years and I was still in my corporate job and you know I was still flying from coast to coast almost every week um, in my job so it, it was grueling and then um, finally you know I had an amazing boss at you know this fortune 500 company that I was working at you know, and I was a senior manager for this company of 27 years. So I was there quite some time. And he said, Joe, you need to take some time off. He says, you're not going to be standing at the end of your career and say, you know, I'm so happy I didn't take, you know, advantage of any of my benefits, you know. So I took time. And it was during that time I really started to do some really deep assessing, you know, and really taking an inventory of, you know, what my values were and what did my life look like in accordance to that. And then I realized I was living a lie, <laughs> you know, so the things I said, this is what's valuable to me, but there was no evidence of it in my life. So that already was, you know, kind of a wake up call per se. And then two days before I was supposed to go back to work, I got a call that a kidney was ready for me. So I had a kidney transplant. It was the day after my birthday, and so actually next week, the 27th, will be five years since my transplant. And um, uh, when I came out of surgery, I decided, let's have a heart attack, a two-for-one, right? And so I stayed in the hospital for a good 30 days. Um, and um, at the same time, I was going through a divorce, um, ending a 25-year marriage. And so when I returned to work, finally... Um, the first day back, I was told, welcome back. Glad to have you. By the way, while you were gone, your, your job was eliminated. And so my position was gone and I had a, about 30 days to find a position or I, I would, you know, have a severance package, which I opted to. And that was probably the best thing that I could have done. And so I decided I'm delving in, you know, to the next year to myself. So, uh, you know, I've been on a personal growth, personal development, you know, um, you know, road since 2008 it was the first year that I just started to invest in myself. And that's where things really started to come to light. Right. And really taking a deep search within. But I also found, Lisa, that it was another hiding place for me. I mean, it's a place that I can hide in a community that is so supportive. 
you know, they see you, they love you for who you are, et cetera. And so I was able to, you know, really be in these communities and be, uh, you know, a source of light and love and speak about things, even teach about things, coach about things, but never apply them, you know? So um, that all came and then th things just started to unravel um, financially. Um, I was not used to the lifestyle I was going to be introduced to, which was, you know, I could go basically into any store. I mean, I'm not, this is not bragging, but I no not necessarily have to look at the price tag, you know, and I could do that today, but it's more like the dollar store. Okay. <laughs> so I just switched stores. <laughs> I don't have to look at the price tags. And so it was very humbling. It's like, I'm searching to love myself. And in the midst of this, my past is now coming up to show me, dude, <laughs> you're not lovable. So, you know, in the midst of this, it's like now I built now another reputation within the conscious community of like someone, oh my God, he represents love, he embodies love. And now I am have another mask that I'm now wearing in the community that is helping me to shed it. So hence it continued on and then you know, they say that when you abuse something, it always rises to the surface. If you abuse a truth, a relationship, the truth always rises. And that's what happened. I couldn't turn anywhere else. And I began to experience deep loss in my life. Um, and it started last August, actually. It's been a year. Um, I lost a relationship that I was, you know, very um, invested in. Um, my mom passed. Um, it'll be a year this Saturday. Um, my company, Love Wave, we were served with the cease and desist letter that our name was um, being, um, that there was another company, uh, another uh, fashion brand that had was using Love Wave in terms of trademark. Um, and then I decided, let's get a puppy. That'll help me. <laughs> I got a puppy in January of this year and um, a little bulldog, so cute. And I thought, this is what's going to revive me. This beautiful animal and creature, right, outside of me is going to fill my world. But then what I realized is that how I was taking care of the dog was how I took care of myself. And it was an epiphany that was very sobering. So, for instance, you know, not taking the dog for walks. I didn't take me for a walk. You know, and the dog was hungry. Just give him a treat, right? Which is not good for him. I would do the same thing. So in this realization of it, it was like, wow, I thought this would help me to get to the state. And I fell into to depression. You know, for someone who's known from my past as someone who lights up a room and who can bring joy and like to say I'm depressed. What? And so it was a, it was something that I, I said, I'm experiencing depression, you know, and anxiety. So what happened is that I'm working from home, the puppy's underneath the desk. And because I have severe neuropathy, I can't feel, you know, the majority of my feet and parts of my legs. So, you know, a cute little thing decided to chew on my baby toe <laughs> and I didn't feel it. And, um, I, now he was tugging at my sock to take it off. And I looked underneath. I'm like, oh, would you stop? And I went down to pull my sock back up. And I pulled my hand up and there was blood everywhere. I'm like, oh, my God. And so within two days, um, they said, well, we'll give it a week. Otherwise, we're going to have to amputate your toe. So um, that occurred. And, you know, somewhat of a loss. And then I, I rehomed my puppy. It was, it was too much for me. And I was trying to fill these voids with other of these things that I thought were going to fill my bucket. And, you know, just the beauty of what God was doing for me was actually answering prayer. It was my cry <laughs> that said, I'm open and I'm willing. Show me the path. I know that pain is the portal to freedom. And be careful what you pray for is all I could say because I came at such a you know a rapid pace and I was living in Arizona I wanted to move to back to San Diego which is my home you know town 
and I had two of my daughters, teenagers, who were going to come with me. And then they informed me shortly after I got that surgery that, that they were deciding not to come with me. And they'd be staying in Arizona. So I'm like, oh, my God, you know, I'm losing, losing my daughters. So I'm adding to the story of all this loss. And then I just, I had this moment, you know, where I went out and I grounded in the earth. And because I have neuropathy, my head kind of just gets messed up. It's like I can't feel the ground, right? And so I just, like, was just grinding my foot into the ground. I could feel, but I know I'm like, mama feels me, though. Like, I, I just, I mean, you know. So just in that moment, it was a new beginning. And in my quiet time, and actually really rediscovering the power of prayer, you know, for me is, so what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? I surrender. I let go. And what the result of that was a decision to move out of the country. I sold 95% or, or gave away of my worldly possessions. And I kept enough to fit into a sedan to drive to Mexico. And so uh, that just happened in June of this year. And I went down with not necessarily a plan just to see universe, what would you have for me? I know I wanted to connect with my nature, which is the ocean. And um, I was able to do that. And um, shortly after, um, God and I had a, a great conversation. And he showed me the path back to the place, Lisa, that I've resisted all my life. And that's the house that I grew up in. And I'm back in San Diego. I'm temporary living with my 88 year old father. And we've restored a relationship that is, it's, it's crazy how I've never felt so close to my dad. So there's a lot of healing going on in my family as well. And during that time, and I know I'm speaking a lot here, but you know, my, um, a friend of mine from Austria, when I was in Mexico, we met for a short time on the phone and she asked me, you know, what is Joseph's best life look like? And I, I couldn't, I automatically think, oh, the house on the hill or the house by the beach, the car, blah, blah, blah. And I could not even go there for some reason. And she said, good. She goes, because my question is, how does Joseph's best life feel like? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can, I can go there. And the first things that came up were, you know, my best life feels easy, simple, and healthy. And I, I declared it on that day that I am living a life of ease, simplicity, and health. And then I began to visualize, you know, <laughs> it was easy. Little did I know that part of that would be returning back to my roots. And I'm finding my life today easy, simple, and implementing this care of myself for my mental health, my emotional health, my physical health, and my spiritual health. So, yeah, I'm talking about returning home. That's literally and figuratively, right? <laughs> so I know that took a while, but um, that kind of has been the journey the past five years or so. And, you know, the idea of self-love is one that is important to me because it's not something that I think we can actually learn how to do. And we could talk about that, but that's kind of been the journey to where I am today. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes we get stripped of everything. And it sounds like from what you share that you were almost, were you holding on to like the, the, the way things looked on the outside as a way to feel good and like how you were supposed to show up? This is kind of what I heard. And and I know the caretaker in you, you were a pastor or a priest in the past. Is that true as well? I was actually in ministry. Um, okay. Yeah. And I actually was going to seminary to be a pastor, but discovered that that's not what I wanted to do. 
you know. Okay. Yeah. But I know that person in you, it seems like you, you like to help other people and you could put the focus outside, but you were having a hard time putting the focus inside. Oh yeah. Yeah. Everything was about helping others. And it felt amazing. That's who I, that is who I am. Yet there was a place where I didn't have to focus on me, <laughs> you know? So my cup was filled when I filled others. You know, what's interesting is, do you know how to decipher for other people, like our listeners who are listening to this now? Because I too am a helper and sometimes it can be helped to a fault. So how do you know? Like, do you now understand that journey? Because you were like saying there's, I, I feel the same way. There's not a how to for self-love. Like we, it's like, what is the roadmap to loving ourselves, right? We talk about it, but I don't think many of us really understand. So you just had this profound journey. Can you tell us what you've learned, what it's not and what it is a little bit more maybe? Yeah, absolutely. You know, here's what I've learned, Lisa, and is that I've always wanted to learn how do I, how can I love myself more, right? you know, learn to love. And then I got this epiphany that I, I can't learn to love myself more because I am love. So it's really about seeing myself. It's kind of like the sun, like saying you illuminate, that's who you are. You're the sun. I am love. And I'm over here trying to learn how to love myself because if I, I mean, you know, sure. It's a good exercise to say, list 10 things of why you love yourself. Right. But if I have to say, I love myself because, that's not love. Because if I say, oh yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just saying, yes, yes. I understand what you're saying. I was just nodding. I was feeling that. Yeah, I mean, because if I had to put it, you know, I love myself because I'm, I'm a nice man, right? I mean, to me, that's kind of like prompting the ego. It's like, there it is, right? There's a standard he needs to live up to, right? And he will love himself because he's a nice man. What happens when I'm not a nice man? So to me, it's like an activation of the ego. You know, here's who I see I am. No, I love myself because I am. Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, right. It's like, that's it. And it's like, it's when I know who I am. That was the, that's what changed everything for me. Because self-love today has become kind of this pop culture phenomena, you know, people. And I really appreciate people taking care of themselves in the way of, you know, a spa day or taking a bath and or even, you know, meditation, of course. And all these things are ways to, you know, love yourself. Um, I also think that, you know, that um, it's temporal, you know, um, and, and Here's the funny thing is that, you know, part of the work that me and my team have done for Love Theory is we have a YouTube show called Love Theory Live. And one of our favorite episodes is we were asking strangers on the street, you know, on a scale of one through 10, how much do you love yourself? And people would say four, five, you know, six. And you know, the next follow up question is what would need to happen for you to be a 10? right? To say, I love myself. I'm a 10, right? And everything was, oh my gosh, I need to be more consistent. I have to finish what I say I'm going to do. I have to meet my goals and everything was performance based, right? It was about when this happens, I will love myself. And so it was a cool discovery for our team is like, wow, you know, love is predicated on performance and results, not because of who you are. Right. And so it started that idea of like who then that existential question, who am I, <laughs> you know, type of thing. So that has been really my focus this last year, even though you and I have done that work for a long time. It got to the point of who don't I want to see and, you know, in myself. So in doing shadow work, you know, as you know, is is looking at our wounds and all these places that we've shown up and our humanity has shown up. I started to embrace, you know, the dark parts of me and made friends <laughs> with them because the shadow follows you wherever you go, especially when light is illuminated. There is the shadow, right? And so, and looking at all those, and that's why I'm a self-proclaimed messy human, you know, because in my 
thought that, you know, a very put together dude, right, is going to have all his ducks in a row, right, and will have the career, the family, you know, the material goods, you know, status, friends group, all of these things. And as I accomplished all of those, I probably hated myself the worst. That's what's so interesting. That's one of the things I don't like about social media is the misrepresentation and uh, the look, the, uh, you know, lifestyle that people are creating. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we're often taught that is such a profound uh, realization that you had that the understanding and even the answer from these people you were interviewing was performance based. And you know what that brought me to loving ourselves because of what we do or how we, that brought me to the socialization, like the four agreements, Don Miguel uh, Ruiz would speak about this, right? That, that socialization of I do something and then I'm a good girl or I'm a good boy, or I do something and I'm a bad girl or I'm a bad boy. Right. And I think that is a huge part of the training that we get in society reflected back to us. And it's like, no, you deserve love because you are here. You are love. You you're worthy because you were born. Right. (laughs) Like, right. Because you exist. I mean, simple as that. You know, and so I think in the idea around the shadow, right? And getting to know who you are. You know, um, I I recently, you know, um, learned that there are pivotal moments in our lives that really define us, right? And in terms of our identity, and they will never change. And I've been trying to change my identity, where it's like, no, get to know who you are, right? And so um, I had an experience where someone said, who do you, you know, um, hold in high esteem? Who do you, you know, who do you love? You know, who do you wish you could be like? So, of course, someone came to mind and they asked, you know, why? And I said, well, they're unapologetic. They're insanely disciplined, right? And they are like sickly determined, like, you know, and I'm inspired by that. But guess what? I'm not going to be that. So what happens is that, I had to learn as a young kid, how do I compensate for what I'm not? Then my identity starts to come, right? So there's these three times in life, Lisa, where we really have these defining moments. And this is where the self-love comes in. In childhood, there is a moment that we know, we don't articulate it because we're kids, but we know something's wrong here. So either I got violated, someone said something to me, I felt shamed, I was embarrassed, whatever. We have that moment as kids, right? Something's wrong here. And then in adolescence, when we're teens, it's like, I don't belong. And it's typically we're trying to fit into a group. Is it a group at school? Is it, you know, um, your family even? You know, a friend's group. And then in adulthood, it is you know, I'm on my own. There's that moment when you go, no one's going to help me anymore. I'm on my own. And those three pivotal moments help define us. That's our identity. Now, yes, I know my identity, my, my divine identity, who I am, no doubt about that. But in this third dimensional world, right, those three things have produced this. My identity is I am um, a sensitive man. I am empathetic. And I'm passionate. That is my secret formula in my life, where I wanted to be unapologetic, determined, and right. And so it's like know who you are. And so the the pathway to the self love that I have in this moment, girl, was through integrity and authenticity. And I'll tell you why. Integrity. <laughs> Oof, this hits me in the heart. Mm-hmm. Integrity isn't just saying I'm going to show up at 10 when the meeting starts or I'm keeping my word. Integrity is knowing that you are whole and complete in who you say you are. So if I say this is who I am, right, and I am, you know, um, a, a divine being, I am light, 
right? I am healed. I am whatever it may be, whether it be an affirmation of what I say that I believe in, believe, am I whole and complete in that? Or am I still wearing masks to hide from who I am? So when I accepted that I'm a sensitive dude, you know, man, I can feel what you feel. That's the empathy in me. And when you hear me talk, I might be a little over the top. It may look dramatic, but I can feel that shit. No, that's a part of your gift. That's one of your big gifts. Yeah. Sorry. I love who I have discovered, who I am. It's like, you know, I'm going to honor source, honor God, honor the universe by being fully me. Because it's the only way that what's inside of me can be put out there. Not to the world, but to my world. Who's my world? People I love my acquaintances, my friends, those who may get to know me, et cetera. To say I'm here to save the world would be ridiculous. It's my world because there's a trickle effect after that, right? So anyway, I'm sorry I got a little on soapbox there, but. (laughs) No, don't apologize at all. I think it's really beautiful. And I think that often sensitive men haven't had a place. And that's part of why I wanted to bring you on is because you have such a big heart. You are so gifted and we need role models and examples of men living their divine masculine, living in their heart and in their integrity and in their strength and, you know, all the beautiful gifts that the men bring, because we need to do this together. We need, you know, there's this polarization and um, sometimes even like hating on men um, after, you know, a lot of things that the feminine has gone through and that doesn't work either. We need each other, not in a needy way, but in an interdependent way that we have gifts that we each bring. And unfortunately we have trained our men away from their sensitivities often because we're not all that different. Like really, like we are and we're not. Right. Right. At the core of us. I think that is really, really beautiful and important uh, what you were sharing. And so would you have, before we start to wrap it up here, I wonder if you have a tip that you would maybe often offer to our listeners that would help someone on their journey who's like, I feel like I'm not authentically me. I don't know who I am. I don't know how to be me. Yeah. Is there an exploration you can share? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of a three part or like a three legged stool, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, the first thing I say is take off the mask. We're, we're all hiding, Lisa. We're all hiding. You and me and people listening to this, you know, um, podcast. We are. We're all hiding, but it is taking off the mask, right? And and then the second thing is face the truth. You know, the third thing is to open up to love. So it's the first two that I think are is where courage, vulnerability, and bravery really comes in. And being authentic, how you know, being authentic about how you have not been, how you have been inauthentic. Because being real isn't about puffing your chest out and just saying things that sound real. This is about getting to the core where you open up and take the veil and take it back and say, wow, look at my, look at me, right? The beauty in me, right? The drama in me, right? The toxic in me, all these things that are my humanity, right? But it it starts with the brutal truth of who we are. You know, and um, finding that with radical acceptance, that's that's where you'll find love. I love that. And thank you for bringing it back because you mentioned it's funny yesterday when we're recording this the day after the fall equinox here in 2022. And that is a day of equal light and dark. And that always hits me of like how we are equal parts light and dark, too. And how you were sharing this a little bit earlier. So I'm glad you gave me an opportunity to bring it back. I think that is the part of the path to self-love is that when we shut off and make ourselves wrong or bad for the things that don't feel as good or don't feel spiritual in us or don't feel like, 
you know, um, enlightened or whatever you want to call it, that when you can love yourself through that, just like you would your child or your niece or your nephew or whoever the person you love the most, which should be you, when you can love yourself through that, that love and light starts to diffuse and melt. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Is there a message that you would uh, say to your 20 year old self? That you wish that you knew then something that you could would go back and whisper on his shoulder, Jojo. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say. Yeah, I would go back and just say, follow your intuition, even though it um, conflicts with what others think you should be or do. Follow your gut. I love that. It's like your gut always knows. The nose always knows. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and is there a big message that you would share from mountaintop that you would want the whole world to know? What would you scream if we put you up there with a big megaphone? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you know this too about me is like, you know, there's a, it's a simple saying, love is still the answer, you know? And um, it, it really is. If you look at any question that life brings, love is the answer and what i've gone through the last year though i would say maybe take the word still out and put not love is not the answer unless you become love because unless someone really understands the power of love it's just gonna <clears throat> feel anemic and sentimental where's the power of love <laughs> right there's a big difference when I hear you say that, is that what you kind of mean, what you were going through earlier, where you were looking for love in all the wrong places? <laughs> you know, everything's a song. No, but it was like looking for love in outside sources or the way that you were supposed to be. Is that what you're saying here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Joe. So thank you for sharing your time, your heart, your wisdom, and your beautiful life experience with us because... The world needs your light and your heart and your love. So thank you. Uh, can you tell us where our listeners can find you? Absolutely. I'm on Instagram um, at I am Joseph Atali is my handle. Awesome. Um, yeah. So come come visit me on IG. Okay. We'll have that in the show notes. Thank right. you again. It has been an absolute pleasure to spend this time and share you with the world. Thank you for having me. I love you. Thank you. Love you too. I'm Lisa Eddy, your host of the Sacred Beauty Lifestyle Podcast, which is now being shared here on YouTube. I hope this episode brought you insights and inspiration to radiate and shine with confidence. Remember to subscribe so you receive new episodes hot off the press right when they are released. And follow me on Instagram for more juicy tips at I am Lisa Eddy. Also, ladies and gentlemen, when you subscribe, like, and share these episodes, it helps me to get seen by more people. And that means a lot to me because I am committed to reaching millions of women across the globe and waking them up to the sacred beauty lifestyle, owning their true power and beauty, both inside and out. Now more than ever, we need more women shining instead of hiding. When we band together, we are unstoppable. This is how we change the world together. Remember the sacred beauty lifestyle and get on out there and shine. The world needs your light.